Wars 2. Hello and welcome back to the B-Movie Rollout. Today is the second part of my review trilogy on the Delta Force series. Last time I spoke about how the Delta Force was, in part, based on real events and featured an impressive cast. Sure, it was unapologetic propaganda and pure revenge fantasy, but it was also Chuck Norris at his 80s action best. So now we're going to look at the 1990 sequel, Delta Force 2, sometimes known as Operation Stranglehold or Delta Force 2 The Columbian Connection. Which is ridiculous because this film takes place in a made-up country. Which should give you an idea of how much of this movie is based in reality. Unfortunately, what is real is that during the filming of this movie, a helicopter crash tragically killed four crew members and a pilot. This film is dedicated to their memory. Now let's take a look at Delta Force 2, a.k.a. Delta Force 2, The Columbian Connection, a.k.a. Delta Force 2, Operation Stranglehold. Roll it! The movie opens in Rio de Janeiro. I wonder if we'll see Jaws from Moonraker walking around. The DEA has set a trap for a powerful drug lord, Ramon Cota, played by Billy Drago. Hey, hey, he's in a lot of crap. You B-movie fans should recognize him. What's my favorite role of his? Uh, gee, um, Tremors 4? Good God, man, those things are the size of eight mule freight wagons. Well, shoot them, that's what you were hired to do. You got to know your enemy, Harlem. The mission fails, probably because Chuck Norris didn't go with. We then cut to Norris beating up some of the same punks from the Terminator. You laid the son of a gun, didn't you? Ah! No, there's only three of them. You know you were trying the wrong techniques against these skinheads. Uh, no offense, guys. Hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole. Nice night for a walk. You're close. Give them to me, now. We then cut to... Coda kills a peasant to remind us that he's evil. While she's there, get rid of the baby. A baby killer. Well, I see they're doing that heavy-handed thing from the first movie. Meanwhile, Chuck Norris's character, Scott McCoy, meets with the DEA. And John Page. Hey, I know him. I warned you, I tell her! I warned you! I tell her! That guy is also in Death Wish 4. We got ourselves a reunion around here. Basically, the DEA wants McCoy and the Delta Force to contact a DEA agent that is undercover in CODA's organization and bring him in because the mission is getting too dangerous. When they meet with him, he refuses to come with, instead telling them how to capture Coda. They do that by catching up to him on a commercial airline, and then pushing him out? Let me go! Okay. <laughs> they manage to bring him in, but he's released on bail. Coda then kills McCoy's partner's family. A plot point ripped from License to Kill, which was released just a year before. His partner goes to kill Coda, but Coda is a step ahead, and he captures the partner and a couple of other DEA guys. Coda, now clearly a James Bond villain, kills him with poison gas. That was the president! He just viewed the videotape I left him of Ramon torturing Major Chavez. He blew his staff! See, this is why I love the Cannon Group. They hire guys like John P. Ryan. He cracks me up. We want our first shipment in a couple of days. I'll talk to you then. Goodbye. They have clearance to rescue the DEA guys and also to burn as much of Coda's drug crop as they can. This is good news for Norris, but it looks like John P. Ryan is making him uncomfortable. I'll hug you! Right, now listen up, ladies and gentlemen. Very difficult to deal with a country like San Carlos. Because it doesn't exist! The Delta Force does some training, which is cool because they did that in the first movie. Your contact in the village is an Indian girl by the name of Kakina Escalenta. McCoy is then flown to San Carlos to start the mission. We trust her? 
Ramon killed her husband, murdered her sick baby, then used the baby's body to smuggle cocaine, and then he raped her. Okay, I don't know why, but no matter how horrifying the line is, John P. Ryan's delivery always makes me laugh. Probably be a good idea not to bring it up when you meet. You might be a little sensitive. Why is he smiling? That is not a smiling line. Always a hard way. This will totally be a catchphrase! McCoy lands in San Carlos and meets with his contact. God be with you. No, may God be in public schools. While McCoy is climbing the mountain to Coda's compound, the San Carlos government informs the general they no longer have permission to burn the drug fields. But that doesn't stop John P. Ryan. Why don't you come along for the ride, Ernesto? We're not armed! McCoy breaks into the compound, and the rest of the Delta Force suits up for the mission. They then simultaneously attack the compound while the general burns the drug fields. McCoy rescues the three Navy divers, sorry, I mean DEA agents, and then goes to kill Coda. He is then attacked by a guy with a worse skullet than the guy who eats a candy bar in Die Hard. He kills the guy, but is captured by Coda and his robe. Getting caught by a dude in a bathrobe? That's gotta hurt the ego. Coda puts McCoy in the gas chamber, but the General's helicopter shows up and attacks the mansion. McCoy and one of the DEA guys grab the unconscious Coda and drive off in an armored limo. After a decent chase, they get knocked out by a helicopter flown by Hector Salamanca from Breaking Bad. But again, John P. Ryan shows up just in time to rescue them. Coda's men chase them on foot into the jungle, and a firefight ensues. They're in trouble. But John P. Ryan is still hilarious. Why don't you shut the fuck up? Coda breaks free and runs back into the jungle. McCoy and the girl go after him while the general picks up the last DEA guy and completely annihilates the village. Uh, sorry about your homes. Coda kills the girl because, well, she was in over her head. But it gives McCoy enough time to catch up. McCoy and Coda fight a while in the jungle, but McCoy gets the upper hand. The general catches up to them and drops harnesses, but Coda's men are hot on their trail. Always the hard way, huh? I can see the t-shirts now! McCoy and Coda are dragged by the helicopter, which is hilarious. But one of Coda's men catches up and cuts part of the rope. A guy on foot catches up to a helicopter. Right. Anyway, they make it out, but the cut in Coda's harness proves to be his downfall. Not today, asshole. And with that, the movie's over. Well, that was fucking abrupt. Way too abrupt. Jarring, honestly. Well, this film is a letdown, period. The first Delta Force at least tried to set itself apart from your average run-of-the-mill action schlock, but this movie did not. The action sequences are decent, but it's missing every other element that made the first movie good. One, the theme music is missing. Unforgivable. The Delta Force theme is fantastic, and given this film's lame score, it is sorely missed. Two, the film does not have a strong supporting cast. Billy Drago is normally good for this low-budget stuff, but his character gets really weak as the film goes on. All through the second half of this movie, he issues a bunch of incredibly impotent threats about just killing everybody. I will have to kill everybody in the village. They're dead! There's no escape. They'll all have to die. Vamos. Now I'm gonna kill him. Well, even the children will die. He doesn't follow through. So I can't take it seriously. Also, needless to say, but John P. Ryan is no Lee Marvin. Not even close. And that is coming from a guy who not only knows who John P. Ryan is, but also likes him. Yeah, John P. Ryan is one of my favorite parts of this movie. But that's not saying much, is it? Okay, also, I know this is a nitpick, but what's with the title confusion? My DVD case just says Delta Force 2. The title screen says Delta Force 2, The Colombian Connection. 
And then there's this trailer. Chuck Norris, Delta Force 2, Operation Stranglehold. Read it off. It starts Friday, August 24th at theaters everywhere. That kind of shit pisses me off. Title your fucking movie. All that said, I honestly feel this movie's biggest problem is the fact that it's not based on real events. And it very easily could have been. First, put the movie in the real world, not your imaginary San Carlos. San Carlos. Oh my god, I just re Okay, Chuck Norris's birth name is actually Carlos Ray Norris. San Carlos. What a cute little joke. Seriously though, you want to make a movie with a Latin American drug lord as the villain? Then put it in Colombia. It's only the fucking title. Or better yet, how about Panama? That's right, tell the Noriega story. Make it so that the Ramon Cota character was not just a drug lord, but a strong-armed dictator of his own country. Have him be an ex-CIA guy. Maybe he and the John P. Ryan character used to train together in the 1970s or something. Again, tell the Noriega story. Say that Coda has broken away from his old CIA bosses and is now killing peasants with death squads. So the president orders John P. Ryan to send in Norris and the Delta Force to take him out, Pat Robertson style. ...to take him out, and I think the time has come that we exercise that ability. We don't need another $200 billion war uh, to get rid of one, you know, strong-arm dictator. It's a whole lot easier to have some of the covert operatives do the job and then get it over with. And then replace the real-life U.S. invasion of Panama with the revenge fantasy of the Delta Force. Hell, it wouldn't even be that much of a fantasy. You could talk about U.S. foreign policy. You could talk about the CIA's less than savory history with the drug trade. They could have used the same sets, the same cast, and the same budget, but they would have told an infinitely much better story. And it's not like the Cannon Group was afraid of this stuff. Remember Missing in Action 3? Some of that was reality based. Kinda. Also, that Panama business happened in 1989, which would have made this movie timely as fuck. <sighs> then again, I did spend most of last semester writing a 22 page paper on military dictatorships in Latin America, so maybe that's why I got all this stuff on my brain. Join me next time for the conclusion of this very loosely connected saga with Delta Force 3. We'll see you then. Two of the more serious crashes occurred in the Philippines, and both accidents involved Chuck Norris films under the auspices of the Canon Film Group. <laughs>